Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Littlejohn with Nancy Littlejohn Fine Art in Houston, Texas. We're here today to visit with the artist Kaisa Johnson. She's here from Los Angeles. And I'm going to first say hello, hello. And, and thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for having me. And I'm going to read a little excerpt from her bio and then we're gonna jump into some questions. So, Kaisa Johnson's drawings, paintings and installations explore patterns in nature that exist at the extremes of scale. Using the shapes of subatomic decay patterns, maps of the universe, or the molecular structure of pollutants or of diseases and cures. In short, microscopic or macroscopic landscapes. It depicts a physical reality that is invisible to the naked eye. Often these micro patterns are built up to form compositions that relate to them conceptually. Kaisa received her BFA from the Glasgow School of Art in Glasgow, Scotland. She has exhibited, amongst others, the Aldrich Museum of Contemporary Art, the Tang Museum, the Cordova Museum, Dublin Contemporary, the Nicolaisen Museum, the Katona Museum of Art, and the Hudson River Museum, uh, the second biennial of the Canary Islands, the National Academy of Silence, or Science, um, and then numerous galleries, she um, is an NYFA fellow in 2003 and a Pollock Krasner grant recipient in 2010. Okay, let's have some questions. Okay. Let's have some questions. <laughs> so Kaisa, can you tell us about Ghosts in Common and where did the name originate? Um, well, as we were, you were saying in my bio, um, all of my work has a basis in science and nature. Um, and I often use particle decay patterns, um, which I can talk about later, um, as a base element to uh, build up larger compositions. Um, looking, and I use them in each series to sort of investigate correlations between other things. Um, so I did a series called The Long Goodbye, which looked at uh, the birth and death of stars, and it used particle decay patterns, which are these pathways that are made when unstable subatomic sub particles decay into more stable particles, um, to look at the two um, similar processes of like birth decay and transformation um, at these extreme scales. So this is going somewhere. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so at the beginning of the pandemic, um, I was talking to my neighbor, who is a medieval historian. Her name's Mary uh, Robertson. And she ran the um, documents library at the Huntington Museum. Um, and she's this brilliant, amazing person. And we were talking about the parallels between the medieval experience, especially the mid 14th century, um, in Europe and today. And so the mid 14th century was when the Black Plague um, decimated <sighs> Asia, Europe, and Northern Africa. And a lot of the same things were happening then, where people were quarantining, people were staying right. apart from other people. You know, their worlds became very small. Um, and, you know, the objects that they were surrounded by while, th were, while this was happening were a lot of the same objects that we were surrounded by in this circumstance. And we would talk, Mary and I would talk, you know, I'd see her walking the dogs, and then we started talking about all of these sort of political commonalities that were happening as well. Um, so there was a lot of political upheaval. It was sort of the plague facilitated the end of feudalism, and we rose to like a more market society. Um, and there was all of this violence going on, and these groups of like rogue militias that would wander the countryside and cause havoc. And anyway, it went very deep, all of these parallels. So I started thinking about creating the series that looked at these commonalities. And it, it drew in this thing that I'm constantly looking at and looking for, which is repetition and cycles that occur across scale. So I often look at physical scale, um, but then I also like to draw in sometimes like historical scale and like the human things that happen over and over again. So I was thinking about how these ghosts of the past, these people who had experienced very, you know, some similar things that we were going through and that that will happen again, inevitably. You know, these things occur over and over again. 
um, that we are someone else's ghosts. And like, what are these relics, these physical things that can represent that? Um, so the compositions in the series are drawn from imagery from the 14th century and imagery from today, but in a way that you can't tell which is which because they're essentially the same. Um, and I was thinking a lot about, you know, neutrinos, which are ghost particles, and they are these teeny, teeny, tiny subatomic particles that are so small and so kind of vaporous that they flow through everything all the time. They don't interact with anything, they're so small. And how that kind of becomes like this unifying field. So yeah, I was very bound at home and then also trying to, you know, as we all were, trying to think about these larger things that related us to the universe in these larger ways and to, you know, our predecessors and, you know, as we will be someone's predecessors as well. So um, the question is, how did the pandemic affect this body of work? But I think you've, yeah. you've touched on that. <laughs> it created it, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and, and, you know, for me as a artist, I'm so, I'm so comfortable and so used to wanting to be outside of like this plane, like I'm just, I'm generally looking up to the, you know, super macroscopic and the super yeah. microscopic as a way to almost like put stakes in the universe to find the grounding point of where we are, where it's like, okay, well, this is here and this is here mm -hmm. and we're here. And all of a sudden, the only thing that seemed to make sense was like here. Um, and it's the first time that I really just like existed on this plane in my yeah. head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, in every series, there's a common thread of imagery in your work derived from science and nature. Where do these ideas begin? Um, so I fell in love with science in high school. I had an amazing high school teacher, Mr. Francis, who used to like jump around the classroom and like make up stories about elemental interactions and, and just had such a joy about the physical world that it sparked that in me, that it was like magic. Um, and just, it's so exciting to me that through thinking and through technology and through problem solving, we can understand the massive, beautiful thing that we're a part of. And I wanted to know like what this world looks like in all of its forms and in all of its levels. So that stayed with me, but it had, didn't really interact with my you know, art making until my final year at the Glasgow School of Art, when I was reading a lot of like pop science, uh, quantum physics books. So like all the ideas without the math. And I came across images of particle decay patterns. And I had been thinking so much about drawing, as you do when you're entrenched in it in art school. And drawing is sort of my, I'm a better drawer than a painter, like I'm a drawer, no one says that, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. these are basically drawings. Um, and to see this thing that I was obsessed with, like manifesting as this fundamental, like practice of the physical practice of the universe, I was like, holy shit, the universe is drawing, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I became obsessed with those marks and it became my mark making, where that became my alphabet. Yeah. Um, and initially, I was just using the particle decay patterns and drawing them over and over and over again, very large scale, so that it, they would form this web with areas of like mass and just sort of like thinking about this idea and trying to understand this idea of energy and mass being the same thing in you know, two sides of the same coin. Um, and then throughout you know, the years as they progressed, I got interested in like different scales. So I'm sort of always thinking of what I do as like an elevator, right? And like the rooftop is the cosmos and the like sub sub basement is like, you know, particle physics. And then I get to like go to all these different floors and see like, what does it look like on like, you know, lower basement three where mm -hmm. molecules are happening and what does it look like, you know, historically on like floor 13. Um, I think that way too. <laughs> <laughs> We're always on an elevator. 
elevator, right? It's like Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's, it's that sort of, you know, all of these disparate things happen, but I'm thinking of them as like the same building with just like yes. different elevator stops. Um, so, yeah, so then, and that allows me to pull in all, you know, imagery from any scale. But I am, I, my, the boundary is, is that I want there to be that, like, natural and, you know, nature is known through science um, imagery that allows us to see something else about our world. Like, that's what's ultimately interesting to me. Okay. So um, I think that we're all used to seeing Kaisa's work on a black or white background. But for this show, she's been working on the raw linen, which is just absolutely exquisite. So can you tell us about how you made that transition or what made you decide to use the linen? Yeah, I, um, I had done a bunch of the Ghosts in Common, like there's the little bowl that's in there and the chair on the black gloss. And I liked using these everyday objects against the glossy black to kind of relate it to the cosmos, where you're like, here's this daily object, but it's from the stars, like everything is. Um, and I wanted to, you know, and then I always use chalk on blackboard, and I have since, again, since art school, is sort of this reference to the scientific imagery that I'm using, and I had done some of those. And I tried to make some white ones, and it just like wasn't happening. And so I kind of gave up, and it was like, okay, they, they need to live in the black and the, you know, the sort of chalky gray. Um, and then I had brought the black ones to be stretched and the woman who stretches my paintings had just gotten in this Belgian linen and was like so excited about it and was like, oh, it's so, so smooth. And I was like, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I do white and gray and black. Right. Um, and I couldn't stop thinking about it and thinking about how it actually was the most appropriate, it was so earthy and so like of yeah. this earth and here I was resting on this earth <laughs> artistically for the first time maybe ever. And it seemed to resonate with the, the subject matter and the ideas. So I, I so tried natural. it. Yeah, and it was so, it like opened up this whole other world of materiality. Um, and, you know, I'm using like all of these things that I've used before, but together. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, watercolor, gouache, ink, um, acrylic paint. And that allowed me to just really vary. It doesn't vary the, the marks because I'm always using like, you know, these are all the particle decay patterns. So the 11 particle decay patterns that I use as my base alphabet are there occurring over and over again, building up the mass of the composition. But it allowed me to make ones that like disappear further, you know, into mm -hmm. the background and like really sit up on top. Um, and Do you want to talk to us a little bit about your mark making process? Sure. I mean, it's, um, so there's 11 particle decay patterns that, there's more than that, but there's 11 of them that I kind of have become mine. Um, and I will draw them over and over again until they start, you know, building up the areas that become the subject matter. So if you look at a piece, once you know one of the shapes, you're going to start to see it yeah. over and over again. Um, and I'm trying to find one that's super clear here, and I don't know that I can. But there's one, my favorite one, is called the arabesque. Um, and it's like this one line that goes up and then explodes into 10 different tendrils. Um, here's one that looks like a tulip, that's what I call that one. Um, but so it goes like straight up and then it explodes into four different particles, so you get this like bowl shape and then two little, two little particle lines in the middle. Um, yeah, and I love them, and I like have different relationships to them. So like sometimes I'm really into this one, and sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that one's so annoying. Um, but you know, do I do you try to incorporate all eleven. I marks? do. Yes. Okay. I do kind of feel like I need to. It's like you can't have a really let the child know that one's your favorite. Okay. Um, or whatever. Um, yes. So I do. But, but some are good at, you know, they each have, um, you know, of course, their own shapes. And so some things are good at making straight lines. And some things are good at making things bulbous. And some mm -hmm. things are good at giving you a hard edge. So I know sometimes what one I need to use to accomplish a certain aesthetic okay. thing. So um, the subjects range from everyday objects and flowers uh, to the cosmos. So... Can you explain how you, get, yeah, how you get from <laughs> one on. to the other? 
Um, so, again, it was sort of like thinking in these mini like strata where you know, the domestic objects was looking at these common objects between these times. So, you know, bowls from drawing, you know, medieval drawings from the mid 14th century, um, or like domestic scenes from the mid 14th century. Um, or there's a lot of garden imagery to be found there. Um, and the garden one specifically took on a, its own little like subseries because you know, it was using my garden at home um, and then these, you know, gardens from them to make these paintings and reading about like what was in the gardens then and what was in my garden. And a lot of what was in my garden, mint, rosemary, wild roses, um, thyme, were used, they were dried up and used as, you know, ring a ring of rosies. So pocket full of posies, mm -hmm. people would put these dried herbs in little kerchiefs and carry them around their faces, hoping that it would like ward off the sickness mm -hmm. and also would, you know, drown out the stench of death. Mm -hmm. um, so that was this other, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. here's all the same plants as we're experiencing our own, you know, form contemporary plague um, that were used then. Um, so that became really interesting to me, and those I've kind of gone off on a tangent of the, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the play garden ones. Um, and then the cosmos ones, I just did a few because that was sort of this outer idea about another commonality that we are consistently looking to the cosmos for an understanding of ourselves, mm -hmm. and that that is a very human experience. So again, and these are more discernible, but like, these drawings of the cosmos from, from that time and then what we kind of know now. And so it's the same thing, but then those of course are slightly different because we can see more and understand more. So how does this new body of work relate to say, um, she did a solo show at the gallery and it was based on, it was called crude or black oil and it was about the composition of the structure of petroleum at different stages. Yeah. So how do you Yeah, how how do they how, how do I get from here that? to there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it was again, I think with each series I'm like in the way that Ted was saying, like you're posing a question mm -hmm. or an idea. And so that was about, you know, how do I understand through these physical natural patterns the substance that has like defined our age and has created so much like havoc and war and then innovation and then like like it's such a powerful thing that's like almost neutral like it's not inherently good or bad but our, our interaction with it has been you know explosive um, so it's that question and then it's the framework of like what are the microscopic patterns of that thing that define it um, both actually and then also like metaphorically. Mm -hmm. um, and so that question is a question that I'm exploring in the same way and, and with this like these micro alphabets. And then this question was like, what defines this time as a human experience? Um, you know, that is, what are these common threads mm -hmm. that, that tie it together? And then what are the marks that are commonalities and then also metaphorically about like transition and dis dissolution and the constancy of cycles by looking at physical cycles and historic cycles. So it's the same elements like recombined. Mm -hmm. I kind of think of all of the series as short stories okay. where my interests stay the same, but the questions that I'm exploring can change. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. That was great.